Welcome back to our channel, where we dive into the mysteries of the universe and uncover the secrets of the cosmos. Today, we're exploring a groundbreaking discovery that has left scientists scratching their heads. The James Webb Space Telescope, humanity's most powerful eye in the sky, has spotted strange lights coming from a cold, failed star. Stay tuned as we unravel this cosmic mystery together. It might seem unbelievable, but it was only a year and a half ago, in mid-2022, that we hadn't yet seen the initial science images from the James Webb Space Telescope. Astronomers made a surprising discovery with James Webb, the identification of six massive galaxies that came into existence between 500 million and 700 million years following the Big Bang, which brought the universe into being. Since then, our view of the cosmos has undergone a revolutionary transformation, marked by an array of groundbreaking findings. These include the most distant black hole, the farthest galaxy, the farthest red supergiant star, and numerous other cosmic record setters. James Webb's accomplishments are nothing short of extraordinary, but its mission was always about more than just capturing stunning images. It was designed to deepen our understanding of the universe, our place within it, and the narrative of how the universe evolved to its current state. By delivering a series of astonishingly detailed images, James Webb has begun to peel back the layers of deep space secrets, aiding in the refinement of our own origin story and exploring both the similarities and differences between us and the vast universe around us. Join us as we explore some of the recent breathtaking discoveries from the scientific treasure trove of NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. Astronomers have discovered a brown dwarf, often referred to as a failed star, which exhibits signs of having an aurora. Auroras, commonly known as the northern and southern lights, occur when charged particles from the sun collide with molecules in Earth's atmosphere, typically visible only at higher latitudes where the planet's magnetosphere channels these particles towards the poles. Auroras have also been observed on other planets within our solar system, including Jupiter and Saturn, as well as on active moons such as Jupiter's Io and Saturn's Enceladus, all caused by the bombardment of charged solar particles. The detection of a similar auroral display around the brown dwarf, named W1935, and situated over 40 light years away from Earth, presents a fascinating mystery. This brown dwarf lacks nearby stars that could supply the charged particles necessary for such auroral activity. Brown dwarfs, which are larger than gas giant planets yet smaller than stars, form in a manner similar to stars through the collapse of a cloud of gas and dust. This often leaves brown dwarfs isolated from stars, as is the case with 1,935, making the source of its aurora a captivating puzzle for astronomers to solve. Brown dwarfs like W, 1,935, are sometimes referred to as failed stars because they lack the necessary mass to ignite nuclear fusion of hydrogen into helium at their cores, the process that fuels stars during their main sequence phase. The potential aurora detected over W1935 was suggested by infrared emissions from methane, observed by the James Webb Space Telescope. Such methane emissions on Jupiter and Saturn typically result from their atmospheres being heated by charged particles spiraling down magnetic field lines and colliding with atmospheric particles, also generating auroras. Researchers speculate that a similar mechanism could be responsible for the aurora on this lone brown dwarf. Given the absence of an external solar wind to generate the aurora on the brown dwarf, the team hypothesizes there might be an internal process at play, energizing its atmosphere. Another possibility is that interstellar plasma is interacting with 1,935, or perhaps the brown dwarf is not as isolated as it seems, possibly being impacted by a stream of particles from a nearby active moon. This intriguing find was made by a team led by Jackie Faraty, an astronomer at the American Museum of Natural History, during a study of 12 brown dwarfs. In their exploration, using the James Webb Space Telescope, researchers focused on a group of brown dwarfs, including W1935 and W2220, two remarkably similar celestial bodies. 
This $10 billion telescope revealed that they were almost identical twins with comparable temperatures, luminosity, and compositions, including water, ammonia, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide. Yet, a striking difference was observed. W1935 exhibited methane emissions in infrared light, while in W2220, methane absorbed light instead. As Faherty remarked, the presence of methane was anticipated across these brown dwarfs due to its prevalence. However, the observation of methane emitting rather than absorbing light was unexpected. Faherty expressed initial confusion, wondering about the source of this methane emission. To unravel this mystery, the team modeled the atmospheres of both brown dwarfs and discovered that while double U2220's atmosphere cools with altitude, W1935 experiences a temperature inversion with its atmosphere warming at higher altitudes. Ben Burningham, the lead researcher on atmospheric modeling from the University of Hertfordshire in England, found this temperature inversion particularly baffling. Temperature inversions of this nature are rare, and their occurrence in the atmosphere of W1935 provides a compelling puzzle for scientists to solve. This phenomenon has been observed in planets orbiting close to a star, where the star's heat affects the stratosphere, but witnessing it in a body without an apparent external heat source is extraordinary. This discovery prompted the researchers to look towards Jupiter and Saturn, where temperature inversions are also notable in the atmospheres of these solar system giants. The prevailing theory attributes such heating to processes similar to those that generate auroras, Auroras have previously been cited to account for unique characteristics in brown dwarfs, including radio emissions from the warmer ones among these celestial objects. However, the James Webb Space Telescope's observations of W1935 mark the first instance of methane emissions from a brown dwarf being identified, suggesting an auroral activity. Faherty highlighted that, with 1935, we observe an extension of a solar system phenomenon in the absence of stellar irradiation, which challenges our understanding. The James Webb Space Telescope enables an in-depth examination of the chemistry involved, allowing us to compare and contrast how auroral processes might differ beyond our solar system. Additionally, another groundbreaking discovery made by the James Webb Space Telescope involves rogue objects in space emitting radio signals uncommonly observed from celestial bodies, further pushing the boundaries of our knowledge in astrophysics. The rogue planets observed by the James Webb Space Telescope within the Orion Nebula, a prime target for astronomical observations, total over 500. This significant discovery was made possible through Webb's capability to detect infrared radiation emitted by these relatively young planets. Interestingly, about 80 of these planets are found in pairs, with masses similar to Jupiter's. These pairs orbit each other at distances, ranging from 25 to 400 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun, earning them the designation Jupiter Mass Binary Objects or Jumbos. These jumbos present a considerable puzzle to astronomers, as their existence challenges prevailing theories on how planets form. Some researchers speculate that these entities might not be planets at all, but rather a new class of objects that sit somewhere between planets and brown dwarfs, the latter often referred to as failed stars due to their ambiguous status between planets and stars. While Webb's observations confirmed that jumbos emit infrared radiation, the authors of the new study were curious to determine if these binary systems also produce radio waves. This interest stems from the fact that different types of cosmic objects emit unique patterns of radio emissions, a characteristic that helps in their classification, similar to planets. Planets like Jupiter emit various types of radio signals, including those in the gigahertz frequency range, which are thousands of times higher in pitch than FM signals, largely due to their magnetic fields. Identifying similar signals from the jumbos could be key in clarifying their nature. Luis Rodriguez, a professor emeritus at the Institute of Radio Astronomy and Astrophysics 
at the National Autonomous University of Mexico and lead author of the study, mentioned that such observations might also shed light on why some celestial objects exhibit radio emissions while others do not. To search for radio wave evidence of the Orion Nebula's jumbos, where these intriguing pairs are located, the research team delved into the observation archives of the U. National Radio Astronomy Observatory. They discovered just one pair, dubbed Jumbo 24, that seems to emit radio waves, making it an anomaly among these already unusual objects. Jumbo 24 is notable for being the heaviest of the jumbos and having the closest orbiting components. Analysis of a decade's worth of data revealed that the radio emissions from Jumbo 24 were consistent and strong, with a power equivalent to about a quarter ton of TNT and frequencies ranging from 6 to 10 G. Interestingly, the radio waves were not circularly polarized, meaning they did not exhibit the spiral twisting typically seen in electric fields of such emissions. These characteristics are not what astronomers would expect from planetary signals, as Rodriguez pointed out, highlighting the unique nature of these findings. Circular polarization is a clear sign of magnetic fields, and without it, the researchers cannot conclusively attribute the signals to Jumbo 24. Compared to other exoplanets, whose radio emissions tend to be more variable and weaker, the signals from Jumbo 24, if not actually from a pair of planets, suggest a different kind of cosmic duo. These signals stand out significantly from those typically emitted by brown dwarfs and have even dismissed the possibility of pulsars rapidly spinning remnants of dead stars known for emitting radio waves at consistent intervals due to the unique brightness and frequency of the beam. The team also assessed the chance that these signals could be coming from an object located behind Jumbo 24, finding it incredibly unlikely at a probability of just 1 in 10,000. And for those considering extraterrestrial origins, Rodriguez points out, that the similarity in emission levels between the two components of Jumbo 24 leans towards a natural explanation. With research at a standstill, the team plans to request time on the Very Large Array in New Mexico, operated by the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, to gather data on free-floating planets. Until such data can be obtained, the nature of these radio signals, captured by NASA's $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope, will continue to be an enigma. While the James Webb Space Telescope often garners attention for its groundbreaking discoveries, innovative astronomical achievements aren't solely the domain of high-tech equipment. A prime example is the capture of the highest resolution gamma ray image ever taken, a task accomplished without the need for sophisticated spacecraft or ground-based arrays. This remarkable scientific achievement was made possible through the use of a basic stratospheric balloon, layers of photographic film, and some clever engineering. Late in the previous year, researchers from Kobe University detailed their experimental approach in a paper published in the Astrophysical Journal. The focus of their pioneering astrophotography was the Vela Pulsar, a fascinating celestial body nearly 1,000 light years away. This pulsar, a type of spinning neutron star that forms from the collapse of a larger star is particularly notable. Despite measuring only about 12 meters in diameter, it rotates 11 times every second. The Vela pulsar emits charged particles towards its poles, producing emissions across the electromagnetic spectrum, including radio waves, visible light, X-rays, and notably, gamma rays. This diverse emission range makes the Vela unique among pulsars a fact underscored by a separate study in October 2023, which confirmed it as the highest energy pulsar identified by science. The project was led by Shaggy, an astrophysicist from Kobe University. Led by Aoki, the team assembled layers of photographic film into a stack and launched it into the stratosphere using a high-altitude balloon, reaching altitudes of up to 25 miles above the Earth's surface. By arranging the film in a pancake-like stack, they were able to trace the paths of gamma-ray particles without interference from the ground. This technique, though reminiscent of earlier scientific methods, capitalizes on the principle that film darkens upon exposure to radiation a concept similar to the detection of atomic bomb testing in 1945, albeit unbeknownst to researchers at the time. To ensure the balloon captured gamma rays 
specifically from the Vela Pulsar. Cameras were attached to monitor its position relative to the pulsar. However, accurately timestamping the trajectories of these particles remained a challenge. The researchers devised a clever solution by slightly shifting the last three layers of the film stack at regular but varying intervals, akin to the hour, minute, and second hands of a clock. This allowed them to construct a detailed timeline of the gamma rays impact moments, employing a blend of traditional techniques and innovative engineering to achieve precise measurements. As a result, this endeavor yielded the highest resolution image of gamma rays ever obtained, with the Vela Pulsar emitting gamma rays akin to a lighthouse illuminating the night sky. According to a press release, this high-altitude film stack captured 7 million tracks with a precision of 1 slash 10,000 emma. Aoki believes this resolution surpasses that of traditional gamma-ray telescopes by a factor of 40. Thus, while the James Webb Space Telescope and its sophisticated counterparts continue to make astonishing scientific breakthroughs, the significance of a simple stack of film and a strategically launched balloon should not be underestimated. In related exciting developments, the first set of data from a comprehensive sky survey has been made public, offering an X-ray panorama of half the sky above Earth. This includes nearly a million cosmic high-energy sources, among which are over 700,000 supermassive black holes. This collection, known as the Erosita, All Sky Survey Catalog, or Erosone, was released on February 1 est, marking the most extensive catalog to date of the universe's most intense energy sources. These include phenomena such as massive exploding stars and the active galactic nuclei of black holes, which emit brightly in X-rays. Additionally, the publication provides insights into the universe's largest known structures, including cosmic web filaments composed of hot gas highlighting the immense scale and complexity of the cosmos. Since its launch on July 13, 2019, the Erosita telescope has achieved a groundbreaking feat in just six months of operation, discovering more high-energy X-ray sources than those identified in the previous six decades of sky observation. This achievement is considered a significant landmark in the roughly 60-year history of X-ray astronomy. The ERAS-1 survey could shed light on some of cosmology's most profound questions, such as the evolution of the universe and the reasons behind the accelerating expansion of the cosmic fabric. Alongside the ERAS-1 data, nearly 50 scientific papers have been published on a wide array of subjects, contributing to over 200 papers already utilizing data from the Erosita telescope. The primary goal of Erosita is to utilize galaxy clusters as a means to study how dark energy influences the universe's expansion. However, the breadth of research facilitated by the instrument's data has far exceeded this original objective. Highlights from these studies include the identification of over 1,000 superclusters of galaxies, the discovery of two quasi-periodic erupting black holes, and insights into how the X-ray radiation from stars affects the water and atmospheric retention of orbiting planets. Mara Salvato, a spokesperson for the German Erosita Consortium, emphasized the diverse impact of these findings on our understanding of the universe. Welcome to Blessovia Science TV, where we take you on an exhilarating journey through the cosmos and unravel the mysteries of science. We are excited to offer you the opportunity to become a valued member of our ever-growing community of cosmic enthusiasts and knowledge seekers. Exclusive access to cosmic content. As a member of Blisovia Science TV, you will gain exclusive access to a treasure trove of cosmic content, including documentaries, interviews with leading scientists, space missions updates, and awe-inspiring visualizations of the universe, live queue, and a sessions with experts. Your membership will grant you the chance to participate in live queue and a sessions with renowned scientists, astronomers, and space explorers. Get your burning questions answered by those who push the boundaries of human knowledge. Embark on a journey that spans the cosmos and join us in unraveling the secrets of the universe. Become a Blasovia Science TV member today, and together we will reach for the stars. Thanks for watching.
subscribe, like, and share. Don't forget to leave your comment.